Genting Malaysia and MGM Resorts are seen as strong favourites to win full casino licences in New York after Governor Kathy Hochul reached a budget deal with Senate leaders to fast-track casino legislation. Macau-based Inside Asian Gaming reported that under the deal, New York can issue licences for up to three downstate casinos, depending on the attractiveness of bids, with a New York State Gaming Facility Location Board now expected to run a competitive process similar to the upstate casino selection process conducted several years ago. According to the report, the legislation sets a minimum license fee of 500 million US dollars, but the New York State Gaming Commission has the option to accept higher bids. Citing Seabray Equity research analyst John Decree, it said that the existing electronic table game only casinos, Gunting Malaysia's Resorts World New York City and MGM's Empire City, held a natural advantage due to likely concerns over community support and economic development. Demonstrating evidence of local support and zoning approval is required, and economic activity and business development, including maximizing revenues received by the state and localities are the primary criteria for awarding licences. This, he reportedly said, is another key reason he believes Empire City and Resorts World New York City are likely winners. The government has amicably settled a suit filed against it by former Attorney General Tan Sri Muhammad Abandi Ali over alleged breach of contract and wrongful termination from his post as the country's chief legal advisor in 2018. The terms of the settlement were not disclosed and the government did not admit liability. Abandi's lawyer, Datuk Dr. Baljit Singh Sidhu, said that with today's developments, the suit against ex-Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad and the government is struck off, without liberty to file afresh and with no order as to costs. Apandi filed the suit against Dr Mahade and the government in 2020. He asked for special damages totaling 2.23 million ringgit, general damages, exemplary and punitive damages, costs and other relief deemed fit by the court. The defendants argued there was no abuse of power by Dr Mahade. Apandi was appointed when Datuk Sri Najib Raza was the PM. He replaced Tan Sri Abdul Ghani Patayal, who was removed after it was learnt that he was leading a probe into 1MDB. Hibiscus Petroleum is said to be considering listing a special purpose acquisition company or SPAC in Singapore that could raise as much as 200 million Singapore dollars or 620.38 million ringgit. Citing people familiar with the matter, Bloomberg reports the Malaysian independent oil and gas explorer has held talks with potential advisors on the potential spec initial public offering. Its sources said the blank check company, which could raise 150 million Singapore dollars to 200 million Singapore dollars, will look for acquisition targets in the renewable energy sector. Discussions are at an early stage and the company could decide not to proceed with the plan. According to the report, a representative for Hibiscus said in response to Bloomberg News queries that, quote, as part of this long-term energy transition strategy, we are looking at all forms of funding structures, unquote, adding no decision has been made. The company declined to comment on a SPAC listing plan. Hibiscus was the first SPAC to be listed on Bursa Malaysia in July 2011. It became an oil and gas exploration firm a year later after acquiring a 35% stake in Lime Petroleum and, according to its website, has since grown its portfolio to include energy assets in Australia, Malaysia, the UK and Vietnam. Former Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr Ahmad Zahid Hamidi told the KL High Court that he started his charitable foundation Yayasan Akal Budi because he had disposable income from his 120,000 ringgit salary to use for charitable purposes. Testifying in his criminal trial where he is facing 47 charges involving criminal breach of trust, corruption and money laundering in relation to the charitable fund, Zahid said that in 1997, he was earning 
earning 120,000 ringgit a month. He said he used roughly 30,000 ringgit to 40,000 ringgit for himself and his family and used the rest for charity and religious donations. Zahid said that the monthly earnings came from being the chairman of Bank Simpanan National, as well as the CEO of Kretam Holdings, Tekala Corp, Ramatex and Seng Hub. His impression, he said, was that he had this salary to give for the well-being of the rakyat, adding, among others, that it was his parents' wish for him to set up a foundation to help others. The Bagandato MP said this was why he decided to start his charitable foundation and that he had never asked anyone to utilise funds from the foundation for his own personal use. Capital A, the parent of Malaysian budget carrier Air Asia, has reportedly taken the first step toward bringing flying taxis to the masses in Southeast Asia as it continues to transform its brand. Quoting Air Asia's Chief Safety Officer Ling Leong Tian, Nikkei Asia reported that with urban air mobility being a new concept, the company's focus is on creating and enabling an ecosystem and the building blocks for future development and growth. In February, Air Asia Aviation Group inked an MOU with Lessor Avalon to lease at least 100 VX4 electric aircraft. Avalon ordered 500 VX4s from Vertical Aerospace last year. The Nikkei Asia report said a team formed by the three companies will hold its first meeting this month in Kuala Lumpur, aiming to deliver the VX4s in 2025. Under Air Asia's model, the operation will start as a link between Kuala Lumpur's city centre and KLIA, which will reduce the hour-long trip by car to a mere 17 minutes. The report said the fare is expected to cost less than 50 US dollars per person if four people share the same air taxi.